Hi guys, it's Rosalie. Today I wanted to talk about change and insecurities. For the longest time, I hated my hair. And the reason that I hated my hair is not because I personally had any problems with it, but when I realized that people on the outside started to complain to me about my hair, it became an issue. Now I'm talking, I was starting at age, we'll say, uh, 14, age 14. I'm 24 now, and thankfully I have learned to manage my hair. <laughs> but when I was growing up, I remember a specific day in high school when I just went to school. If I don't do anything to my hair, it be, and you guys have seen, it just becomes a giant afro of sorts. I have no problem looking like a lion, but it offends people for some reason. Anyway, so I remember I went to school and this, I sort of scared people with it. <laughs> they'd walk around the corner and there I am walking down the hall and they'd just sort of, you know, do something like, you know, wow, well, what, what did you do to your hair? What did you do to yourself? You know? And I'm just thinking, whatever. Okay. Come on. I just grin. But as the day progressed, more and more people started to say something to me about my hair. It was just this one day. And then I remember a group of cheerleaders, I'm nothing against cheerleaders, but I don't know why it seems like you, those girls are the ones to, you know, they're so cliche in their, in the way that they look at the same time or their rumors, whatever. Maybe I watch too much TV when it comes to that. But I remember walking towards a couple of them or I was walking in the direction and Two of them, their two of them, their backs were faced to me, and I saw one of them who was talking to, to them. And when she said something to them as she saw me, they both turned to look. So I went outside to wait for my mom to pick me up. And this one girl, she'd open the school door as I was waiting outside, and she'd just say things like, get a brush, or you know, comb your hair, or freak. And then she'd close the door and she'd walk inside. That day, that day when I got home, I cried. I remember. I cried because I thought to myself, wow, that was just one day that my hair was really unruly and wild and I got made fun of like that. There are students, there are kids, younger and older and my age, who are getting made fun of on a constant daily basis. Yes. That has to do with bullying, but it also has to do with something else. Why do people care so much about a complete stranger they don't even know? I mean, they care so much they feel they have to say something. Or it just it makes me want to get into their head and try to figure out what it is that makes them say these things. Or what it is that makes someone comment on a, on a on a blog or what it is that makes people argue with each other on message boards <laughs> they don't even know each other so what i'm trying to say is here is that as i grew up i realized that i never hated my hair I hated the people who hated my hair. It may be harsh, but let's get real. Not everybody is nice, and not everybody is going to be nice to you, whether you're nice to them or not. That's just how it is. That's just the way that they've grown. That's the way they grew up. You don't know, maybe they've had a really hard life and they've hardened to life. But not everybody is going to treat you with respect even if you do treat them with respect. Now, I'm not saying that the majority of people won't treat with respect, that's, that's different. You will, you will, you'll get respect. You will be treated exactly as you treat others for the most part. But then you have those few who always think it's a good idea to mess with you. And I grew up with a few people like that in my extended family who I shall not name who would say things about my hair in front of everybody. 
Is that when I was a, a child? So I got onto YouTube, I bought books, how to manage my hair, how to make it look nice and still keep it the way it is. And that empowered me. Now I wasn't changing because I hated my hair. But I changed because maybe that's life's way of pushing you to get better. Maybe that was my own, maybe, maybe I learned the hard way. You can never, you can never tell why it takes something traumatic to teach you and why you would learn something just like that. So I often think about that. I often think, Especially now these days, all these little memories coming up. And thank you guys so much for your messages and your comments. And I'm getting back to all of you. Uh, it's just these, you know, it's like a cleansing of the self. And it feels good. It really does. All of these little issues. Now, I love my hair. And you should love your hair too, okay? I mean, there are people who are out there and they have to buy hair because they're dealing with a life-threatening illness. So I, re I remind myself of that. If I ever, ever drift into that, oh, people used to make fun of me whatever. You need to really, sometimes it's good to be tough with yourself. Um, not to suppress your feelings, but it's good to deal with your feelings and to accept and to move on. I believe one of the viewers, Ronan, thank you for your messages. He said something to me where, or he sent me a message and I'll get back to you, where he said, um, try to visualize a bad experience happening better. Try to visualize a nicer ending to whatever experience you've gone through. And that's amazing advice. Very nice. So I just imagine people saying really nice things about my hair, even if it does look like, uh, like I, I just came out of the zoo. <laughs> I look like that sometimes when I wake up in the morning or, you know, when you're out of the shower, you let your hair dry, air dry and it just puffs up, it's okay. You have to be free and loving to yourself. And that was my point today. And also, if it's up, I mean, if it is to be, it is up to me. I don't really, I forgot who said that, but it's very true. If you're insecure about something in your life, whether you don't like it very much or other people are, I mean, who cares about other people, but or who cares about those who put you down or who are negative to you. But you can change. If you have insecurities about yourself, you can change them. Either You can either change your thinking or you can take physical actions that will affect you better and make you a better person and make you feel better. And that's what I've learned. I've learned that I'm not powerless and neither are you. We all seem to think we are at times because it's hard to remain so focused when there are so many things pulling you in every different direction. My advice is that we can't have any more whining and complaining. And I've caught myself plenty of times whining and complaining. It doesn't do anything, but just make you whine and complain a little bit more and perpetuate whatever problem you're dealing with. So either take the actions or change the thinking. And then I think, what makes someone change? Is it pressure? Pressure from what? Pressure from who? Pressure from themselves? Pressure from time? Life? What makes you change? I read somewhere where they say, someone will change only when their current situation becomes so hard to, to li it becomes so hard to live in their current situation that they can't imagine living, going another day living like that. I mean, does it have to take something extreme for you to change, or will you take the steps to grab life and change it yourself? Just remember, you have the power. It's like that song, I've got the power. I love that song. See you guys.